Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my um, TLS-216 stuff that I have. And I thought I'd just do a quick video so that someone could see a TLS-16 and hear a little bit about it, help them maybe make some buying decisions on their own. When I first got one of these, this was a very inexpensive scope to have 500 megahertz bandwidth. It's unique that it has 16 analog channels. It's sampling at 2 giga samples per second on all channels simultaneously up to. Um, so, I mean, it was a pretty unique scope when it came out, and I don't think there's been anything really like it since. To fit all of these channels in, they had to do away with all the attenuators, so the front end of, the end of this expects a 20 to 1 attenuation. So that, that's fixed, and you can't adjust that in the scope. The other thing to keep in mind of when you're looking at these is, um, see these inputs? See how they don't look the same, necessarily? That's because some of the inputs on, not all of them, but some of them, the plastic is really brittle and chalk-like in the center. And if I take, took my fingernail and chipped at one of those, it would just fall apart just like chalk. Others have more of a plastic plastic that doesn't really do that. And I don't know if that's sunlight related or not, but some seem to do it, some don't. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind with these is the, um, is the only active part of these... Um, of these probes, these active probes, there's nothing back there that's just a plus five and a minus five volts back there. But up here, the probe tip is the only active part. And uh, I don't have it out right now, but um, I do right here. And you can see you got your, your positive and your negative, and then a coaxial that would go to the ceramic chip. Now, there's a ceramic chip, a little wafer in the center of this thing and that is extremely brittle and it'll crack just like a little piece of glass off a you know petri dish or something like that or one of those slides you used to use in college so um and you can see how thin this thing is you can't light ain't very good but it's a pretty thin little thing pod tip and um you twist it and you can snap it and it's plastic coated so I mean you can imagine how thin the ceramic thing is I actually took one apart at one point and had it under a microscope and it's pretty impressively small easy to break and so it's really common so when you buy these probes for example off eBay pay next to nothing unless you can return them because you will I don't know if I can get the focus to go but anyway um, you will get screwed a fair amount of time because most users don't test these. In fact, the reason why I have this particular scope was to test probes because for a while I was running into a lot of them and I would resell them on eBay. And so to test the probe or you're going to... When you first plug a new probe in, the offset may be wrong. You have to run the SPC or actually the probe compensation routine, routine to get the, the probe... the the ground to show even with the actual ground point on these and then you want to take the probe and you'll just wig, rotate it just to, just ever so lightly you don't want to break it yourself and if that signal falls apart um, you got problems now if I grab the probe and just touch it you'll notice it gets noisy that's completely typical and that's what happens so you want to take, in general, on eBay, um, you can get screwed on probes very easily. So even though people ask for three or four hundred bucks, if you never write a return, you really want to pay like twenty-five because they're worth about nothing if they don't work. Especially these guys, it's almost impossible to to get that little ceramic chip out of there. I mean, it is so small that you're almost certainly going to break it, even if it's good when you try to take it out. Sometimes these probes too, the the little electrical leads can break at the strain relief, and you can fix that but it turns out being crude, and that's a common failure on the other types of active probes from Tektronix. I don't know about the other brands. Um, this scope has an LCD display, not just a, just not just the typical tech one, but I put a 600 by four, or 640 by 480 VGA display, six and a quarter inch, I think, or 6.4 inches diagonal into it. Wasn't very hard to do. I just simply used, um, in the flex keypad metal plate, I use some double-sided um, trim tape for cars, automotive, stuck that on the inside of the trim plate, put a piece of glass there, and on the back side put a piece of glass around the, the frame of an LCD display and stuck that to the glass. It, it's a little tricky to get it just right and to not get dust and fingerprints in there, but it works just fine. Um, and then I used a 
24 volt to 12 volt DC the DC buck converter and maybe you can hear a little bit of a hissing noise that's not just the fan going on that's um the buck converter is kind of noisy it's better to buy just a cheap Chinese one that um, has a heat sink built into it they'll seem to be a lot quieter than the the simple ones that I did in fact I think it's called a simple chip or something like that I used um, but it works fine um, when you want to look at a signal and you want to for example um, make it bigger on screen it'll show clipping that's because there's no inputs in the front front end of this thing you know no attenuators so it's fixed at at 20 and so uh, it takes a pretty small signal to actually clip the top and you can see it's flatter and if it's a little bit slot slider or a little bit larger signal you'll see that it's com it'll be turned to completely flat at the top telling you that it's completely clipped how you get around that is you lower the amplitude you go to zoom turn zoom on in this case zoom is already vertical zoom is already at 2x and it had been set at 0.25 horizontal before so I just need to change that it seems to persist and so now I'm getting a, a fuller size signal without the clipping and um, that's actually how it's recommended to do in the um, sales literature I have a an old Tektronix sales literature manual here this is actually an internal document Tektronix written like in circa 1993 or so telling us that you know all of the great selling points of this thing from reading this document clearly they felt that they had a a, a unique instrument here never been made before that simply outperformed all other products on the market that could do similar work and um, they didn't even think the others were close so but of course now it's completely different they actually refer to this as a mixed signal oscilloscope too I think this is one of the first things it's pretty early to be actually called a mixed signal oscilloscope people on eBay try to claim it's a mixed signal oscilloscope but um really it doesn't understand protocols so um you can't really and by the modern sense you can't really um, consider it to be a mixed signal oscilloscope um, these also came with um, let's see so that's the active pro bandwidth out to 500 I think the active probe actually has 700 megahertz bandwidth or something like that but the scopes only 500 so that's what you get we can also use this the inputs are 50 ohm this is a set uh, our 75 ohm input so this is a 50 ohm um, converter for it and so if I take my fast rise signal these don't to do that hold on yeah that'll probably work just about bent the hell out of the thing all right turn that on and let's see See if we can get it to do anything, or maybe I don't. I don't don't have it plugged in enough. Hold on. Yeah, my camera wants to fall over. Okay, so with auto set. This thing assumes that you're going to want to look at a. Um, do that again. With auto set, it assumes that you want to look at a digital signal, not an analog signal. So for a lot of folks, you can actually want to change it to analog for general scope use. So right now I have it on channel 16. Channels are marked from the outside in, which is a little odd. And see how square that thing is? It's not an analog signal right now. So what I do is I select group 1, group menu, and right now group one is set as the first channel being 16 and the last channel being a 16 that's fine um, the display type I want it to everything to be analog this time so I'm just going to select analog there now we have much more of an analog signal and this is a fast rise signal like 800 picoseconds or something like that now I want to make it a little bigger and it's telling me it's clipping and this is a negative going signal uh, there's a couple things I want to do here first of all um, I'm going to go back to menu, Cal probes pass, but it's wrong. I want to initiate it because there is no probe. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's just going to, it's probably going to fail it. I want to initiate the probe so that it accepts, so that the ground reference is correct because with the um, active probes, they, it's different. See, I got the wrong signal type coming in, so it's, it's almost for certain, certain going to fail this yeah probe not connected okay so clear menu but it is I think still initialized 
Okay to initialize probes. Probes initialize. Okay, so all right. Doesn't look like I have any problems with clipping here, so I can get a rise time. Here's my rise time. About one nanosecond. If you use, you can use zoom, but zoom locks in whatever your sampling rate is. So like if I go back to one giga sample, for example, let me get back to it. And then I activate zoom, and now let's say I use the horizontal control menu. Horizontal control to, oops, I didn't turn it on. So zoom, turn zoom on. Okay, now zoom's on. The old factors, okay, were in place. Now, what? At the top left, it shows that it's at one giga sample per second. Now, as I zoom in more, even though it appears that the time base is, the time base is changing at the bottom, the sample rate isn't. So that's why we're getting the low resolution indications over here. And the way to get out of that, of course, is to go back to zoom, get out of it. Now, when I zoom in with the horizontal control, um, my giga samples go up to two giga samples and I don't have my um, low resolution indicator on it. Um, so that's just a basic quick indication of it. They do have some um, accessories that you can get for these things. Um, there's a probe tip accessory. These are pretty rare. The probe just simply slides in there, and then um, your ground lead goes in the back part of it, at the bottom hole there, if you can see it with the light. And then the regular stuff of tapping into chips and so forth. These, um, the probe tips on these were designed to be able to go into a standard, I think it was a .10 inch or .01 inch um, spacing header. Um, but there was a warning that if you stick too many to together, they might overheat. And the one probe that I was using, I think, had maybe that very problem. I've actually used some liquid tape on this, but um, it was pretty melted and so forth. But surprisingly, works fine. Um, people try to sell these probes for a hundred bucks, but you know, I don't know. I think you probably forty bucks or thirty bucks. I like these little coaxial converter things to make it fifty ohms, since so much stuff I do is fifty ohms. It's doing a little clipping again every so often, and again you can get get around clipping with using the zoom control. Um, so and here's an example of an LCD display. This this one is a little bit washed out simply because I need to adjust the display itself, and I haven't. And I think I hid the the wiring for it back here behind here, so I'll have to pull the front bezel off and. Um, do that if I want to, but it's it's perfectly good display as it is, and it wasn't that hard to do. A fair amount of research up front. All right, so um, these things didn't have much in the way of options. Um, shift utility. Um, let's see, system config, I/O. That ain't it. Well, what am I looking for? Shift utility. No, it's none of those things. Usually there's a banner command somewhere on these things where you can like... But maybe this is early enough. This thing, the specs on this are pretty similar to a TDS 640A or 640. Uh, Non-A, but not B or later. Uh, it, um, two giga samples per second, but no front end attenuator, so that's pretty limiting. Um, you have to worry about actually destroying one of your preamps on the front of this thing by applying too big of a signal, so you got to be real careful. It tells you right here, 75 ohms at 5 volts RMS. You know, that's your max. And auto set's pretty slow on this because auto set pulls every single analog or every single analog channel to see if there's something there. Um, even if you don't have them selected in your groups, it still looks at all of them, so it takes a long time. Um, 
I wish I could figure out how to get to the um, to the banner. Usually these have a banner. Maybe I'm staring right at it. And no, I don't think it's here. But all it's going to say is like a 1F, and um, it does. These don't have FFT. You can't have um, Spectrum. Um, can't put a video trigger in it. These don't have run triggering too. They didn't, according to the the documents here, they didn't have enough um, space on the trigger ASIC to put a run trigger feature into it. It just wouldn't fit. There was so many, so many inputs that they needed to trigger off. Of. They just couldn't fit it in the the die space. Um, so it's a decent, okay, 500 megahertz scope for looking at small signals. It can decode a parallel bus but pain in the rear to hook up. Um, I mean when you got 16 probes on this thing it has a lot of probes. Probes are expensive and they're iffy. Um, I have several that are that do have cracked ceramic uh, but it will decode a 16-bit bus. It doesn't recognize I ITC or any of those other things. There might be a way to suck it off and and do it in a program you know with using the GPIB to get the data off but probably not worth your while. Um, it does do 500 megahertz though on multiple channels. I mean, conceivably, the 500 megahertz bandwidth. Conceivably, there's someone out there that could use that. Um, but it might be a really cheap, small signal oscilloscope for someone who needs that, and they want probes with little teeny inputs. I think these probes would have potential too for someone who just wants to power um, the negative. One of these I have written on. I think it's ne negative five and plus five going to them, not. You know, it's nothing real exotic. You know, I got to just take a multimeter to the little contacts there, and you can find out. But it, these are very easy probes to um, to probably use in something else. And um, you know, so if you need a low cost probe, people of course are still kind of trying to gouge on eBay, trying to get a hundred bucks for them. But they're so freaking unreliable unless you have them and can test them first. That I, you know, if you don't have a right of return, I wouldn't even pay ten bucks each. They're just not worth it. But these converters are fine, and if you're using a 50 ohm signal generator, they're great. So, anyhow, TLS 216, old school, very unique, probably still not nothing that has the same capabilities as it, but apparently people didn't need this set of capabilities because they stopped making them. About 1993, that's really impressive. 500 megahertz of bandwidth, 16 channels, 2 giga samples of sampling per channel, and all channels simultaneously. 500 megahertz real time bandwidth, that's actually quite impressive. Bye now.